Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So we have a new handheld review today and we are going to talk about the X6 Plus Edition. Yeah. It's going to be very kinky because we're having a new handheld with some plastic fantastic. But first, let's talk about what comes with the device itself. All right, so what we're going to get, it comes with this very yeah, flimsy box, I can say. So this is the new version 2020 model of the X-Series. For the people who don't know, the X-Series is, is in a lineup of different Chinese cheap handhelds, different form factors, and also, as you can see, in different colors and in different internal memory storage capacities. We're having quite some different versions out there, and it was one big jungle. This thing comes with a very nice... Is it from Halo or what? Leave it in the comments. Where is this from? But nevertheless, it comes with quite some different features. With these versions, are we going to get these cheap headphones, a micro, oh, we have a mini USB. How retro is that? For connecting and also data transfer, here it comes with a deluxe China toilet paper manual. With some basic explanation how it works. Not a lot of information, but. The first thing that I do notice with this device, it's quite big. It comes with a 5 inch display, it's not an IPS because this is more like the budget series from AliExpress. And when I say budget, you're going to get, let's say, flimsy quality and a non IPS display nowadays. Here we're having the AMB, have a very cheap feel. We don't have really a D-pad where we just four buttons, I have no clue why they're still doing this. The analog stick is more similar like in PSP or the model itself, but it is very sturdy. And it is not really comfortable. We're having select start. Here at the top we're having the on and off switch. AV out. CF card input. The USB mini for charging and data transfer. And AV out. And here we're having the volume control. And as you can see we're having left and right shoulder buttons. At the back we're finding the little chrome circle that they basically ripped off from the PSP. At the back there over there we're having the shitty camera that is pretty damn poor. This is the 8 gigabyte model. You can see it from the sticker. And at the right top corner we're having over there. The speaker. I'm very curious how that one is going to sound. In the last couple of years, I did quite some reviews about the X series, and I can already tell you it's already pain in the ass to turn this thing on. But what you're going to get with most of these systems is the basic welcome intro, or we're going to get the Tekken pictures. No idea why they are doing this. Very curious about the menu because if you're looking at this, some of them have the PS Vita ripoff menu, but this is just the basic version. And you don't have the thumbnails, very pleased to see because the thumbnails can be removed. And the main problem is if the file is going to get corrupted behind it, you can't do anything about it. But that's not the case here. So we're having photo, picture, recorder and all the weird stuff like ebook, browsers, nothing to do with the internet. It's just basically browsing in the file system. You're having the tools, like you have a calculator and all those little weird things. Calendar, stopwatch, let's go to the settings. We can change the backlight, as you can see it's on the maximum brightness. Okay, and here we're having the game future. There is no fancy menu this time, just going into the SD card that is here on the top or the internal memory. That's the only thing that you're going to get with directory list and here we're having some options or folders they have made for us. But the support for the games is basically the same like the previous models. 8-bit like Famicom, Super Famicom, Mega Drive, Arcade and maybe it will run PlayStation 1. We'll check it out if it runs the PlayStation 1 pretty decent or it will run shit like the previous models. That's all we're going to do. So when you're playing a game there is a big flaw with this device like a lot of these handhelds. They map the shoulder button to the menu button, yeah. So basically we're only having five buttons that we can use for playing games. See, 
when it comes to Game Boy games, they work like a charm. But we don't use the shoulder buttons for... Okay, so with this testing we are going to try Sega Mega Drive or Genesis. But what is a big problem that we're only having five buttons? First of all, that's a big issue because we need six buttons for some Sega Mega Drive games. The other problem that I'm having with this is that they didn't map the jump button. So what I'm having, the punch and the kick, and that's it. There is no way to also map it to a button. I did check the configuration system by pressing the menu button over here. You go to settings, you can map it, or there isn't a way. You go into key mapping, you can see there is an A, B, and C, so everything is here. But somehow they just messed it up somewhere in the emulator or the backend. I personally have the idea that it runs a little bit better if you're listening to the sound itself. Okay, so the next test we're going to do a three-dimensional shoot 'em up. This is airtight Delta. I just wanted to see how the three-dimensional games are running on the new X Plus edition. So let's go. Okay, so in the next step we're going to try out the TV out function. So what you need to do is put the TV out cable in the left audio jack, or it's not really an audio jack, it's just a TV out jack. Then we need to power on the system. We need to go to the settings. Here you can find the TV out option. When you're pressing this, here you can choose PAL or NTSC. I'm going to choose PAL and we'll basically... Okay, so let's try a Game Boy game. Ah, finally. Okay, let's go. Oh man, the signal is pretty damn horrible. Come, give me a stereo sound. Ah, uh, whatever. But it seems to be that it works very well. And playing a Game Boy game, yeah, what can I say? It works. Don't have a big input lag. But I was very curious, how is the PlayStation 1 game running on the big screen? And they're exactly the same like with the normal display. One thing is for sure, that this system is not a plus edition. They changed the layout, but it still suffers from the same issues. And this is the reason why I'm doing these reviews. Just to see what you're going to get, so you don't need to waste your money. They maybe change the layout and everything looks a little bit different, but at the end, when it comes to the controls, the analog stick and, yeah, let's say the D-pad, it looks pretty damn horrible and it feels very flimsy. The same goes basically for the A, B, X and Y and select and start buttons. The design itself has been changed and I can tell you it weighs a little bit more heavier than the previous models and it feels more sturdy. But at the end, yeah, it's maybe more comfortable than the previous model, still it has some pretty shitty emulation. So there you have it guys, the X6 Plus handheld from a friend from China. This is the lineup of the X series that are basically very budget cheap devices that you can buy from AliExpress. But is this worth your money? That is something you need to decide for yourself. Nowadays there is a big competition of handhelds and there are so many new options out there. Dick Plus, it has been changed in many ways, but sadly the software itself is not improved. 
and if you're still having let's say low fps frame skip you name it it's just one big nightmare if it comes to retro emulation i mean searching for a cheap device i think this is the best what you're going to get even in this year when i'm making this review but i thank you for watching consider subscribing if you have any questions you can always leave in the comments and hope great to have you in the wicked family and i will see you in the next one